Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. And, erm, um, that just happened. But, like, unironically, what what the fr- How was I- Am I stupid? Joyful, jubilant, jumping jocks! I won't be doing them, you will do them. Oh, okay, one, two, three. Mr. Natsume, I'm so pleased for you. Ah, uh, locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, and non-locum judicial assistant, Miss- Mikotoba Esquires. <laughs> I think it's the first time he said that. Now, finally, at long last, they can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent and proof that my tea is innocent. Oh, no. No. Oh, good morning, my dear fellows. No. Hotlock Sholmes. Now, one and only. For now. <laughs> Who knows what <laughs> inventions I'll create next. May you drink my tepid tea and fall over forever. Oh, I thought your tea was innocent. Excuse me? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, you came. How wonderful. Yes. Please save your... Deri... Derison. I know what you're all thinking. Good morning, he says. When it's very nearly time for luncheon, your scorn is written clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought that. Except right now. Because you brought it up. What the? The truth is, I was determined that today would be the day. Asleep seduced. Me last night, I thought. Tomorrow. For once, I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my compatriots. Such spirited determination. Has a beauty all its own, does it not? Um, no. I'd prefer if you actually went through with it. Like... Oh, yes, it totally does. It's the thought that counts. Uh, then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep? I queried. Why, time after time, do they make the same foolish blunder? <laughs> yeah, you're talking about yourself! And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightfully simple. People oversleep. Because they sleep. Excuse me? So you just didn't go to bed? Is not... That an astute insight into the matter? I... I disagree, but Sasato says, Oh yes, so astute. Upon which realization I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a week last night. And the results... <laughs> by, uh, by first light, I was exhausted and began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in the sequel, Naruto is a lot more sassy. And so the conclusion of last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. Agreed. I think most of us already knew that, though. Well. <laughs> See, it's just so dumb, I can't even- I can't even say anything like quippy! Like, oh, uh, well, uh. Anyway, what others presuppose? I prove by experimentation. That, my dear fellow, is the scientific method. Soon to be known as the Sholmesian method. Ah, yes, and one more thing. Do you remember this? Yeah, the poison. Of course. The one that Miss Green had in the hospital yesterday. You didn't manage to... It was a laborious task, as the bottle was nearly empty. But such incons inconveniences do not hinder Herlock Sholmes. Ha! I managed to confirm that it contained... Streichnen. So I was... No... This means Miss Green's gonna go to jail! Perhaps. Though, of course, such circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now. But licking the inside of the neck is not recommended. I'll keep that in mind. To bottle found the possession of Miss Green with traces of slow-acting poison. Strike nine inside. Could I have a word? Oh. Hi. You're the one introducing yourselves this time. Oh, Gregson, how good to you, if you'd come. <laughs> eh, forget it, I'm out of here. B wait a minute, what, Inspector? Yeah, I'm back, I just had to get some chips, you know. Don't want you to make a nuisance to myself. I also really don't like this bloke. Eh. Flunk in your face, I'd say it's somewhere else you think is making a nuisance of himself. I mean, he's just to tossing bottles of deadly poison and refusing to sleep. My dear Inspector, please, speak freely. Pretend that I'm not even here. Ah, uh, believe me, if only I could do that. Life'd be a whole lot simpler for me. 
arguing like in a sicko. Do you have the results, Inspector? Of the investigation in Mr. Shamespear's room? Uh, not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. I'm not here about something else, uh... That dead convict, actually. Right, that Selden fella. What about him? A man by the name of... Oh, yes, he already said it, Selden. Whoopsies. I went through the archives at the yard and dug up a full files, you see? There's something in there that, uh... Well, it caught my eye. Something caught your eye? Inspector Gregson, you have to get it back. You'll need that. As a private... Uh, yeah. I copied out the relevant parts for you, so you can read them yourself. Thank you. Wow. That's really nice of you. Selden, that includes a newspaper article about him dying of an illness in prison. Okay. These documents include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in James Spears' room. Wait, so was it new info, or...? I'll rearrange everything in the court record, so we don't have duplicate information. I was about to ask. Dang. Wish they did that in the other games. I guess this... Oh my gosh, I just realized this might be the most... Is this the most recent Phoenix Wright? Oh. Dude. Have they really not had a game on Nintendo Switch? I guess not. Is the franchise doing good? Oh, I hope so. Why are you giving us a copy of the important files, though, sir? Well, you're the ones who turn out the crew in the first place, you know? Just making sure things get handled in the proper fashion. Oh, Scotland Yard's workings are ever so wonderful. Indeed, my dear fellows, and the inspector here is a shining diamond of its crown. A shining diamond in the rough, maybe? Marahodo. He's, he's more than capable. I mean, he goofed up, but in the future. Look, I just don't want to be holding to the lawyer, that's all, all right? No favors. That's all I do. Later. Counsel for the defense, get in here. Court proceedings are about to resume. Make yourself in the... Just get in here already. Well, I shall leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not nodding off at all. I, I'm not looking forward to sitting down and tilting my head back and falling asleep. Thanks, Jones. I'm rather tired of seeing Mr. Moustache in a flood of tears, personally, so... The best of luck to... <sighs> He's got a sweet side after all. Look at him. Welcome, student Mr. Norahoda Esquire! Yes. It's time, isn't it? Yes, this is it. Please just testify. Miss Olive Green. Mr. William Shamespear. It's going to be their final battle. <laughs> and ours, hopefully, when not so many Jesus. <sighs> I won't really have sa I, I won't really have saved Soseki-san, so I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. It's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Ryunosuke. You have to. Honestly? Despite... Wait, did we get full healed? I don't remember. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That stinks. Okay. If not, uh... We just gotta do our best. Things are on the... Things are on the line, though. I hereby declare the court proceeding session. For the recess, we had a most startling accusation from the defense. Not only the victim of the case we heard were only out for a few days ago was the true perpetrator of this event. A reckless, rash, and prejudiced, prejudiced charge of wrongdoing, in my opinion, my love. I kind of agree. It's a stretch. But in it, if only we knew the poison had stretched not. Because, I mean, come on. There's got to be tons of poison in London, right? How many crimes does Sholm solve? Come on. The prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur. Newcomer from dubious eastern shores. And I thank you for that, really, but... That backhanded compliment, uh, in consideration. A rather cold assessment from the Honorable British Prosecutor, I must say. Wow. Even I'm surprised. Well, Zeke's, is the new witness present and ready for the stand? Oh, you better believe. Ready and waiting in the witness antechamber, my lord. It's good we got her. Very well, bailiff, bring the witness in. Mm. It's a packed house today. He's still here too? Why? Witnesses, state your name and occupations for the court. William Shamespear, my liege. For mine occupation, I can only say that I play a tragic victim to be pitied. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Currently unemployed, in other words. <laughs> I'm Olive Green. 
I'm a fledgling art. Well, no. Not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure who's too weak speed spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. And yet you're still grinding it out. I like that. I like that about Miss Green. She's multitasking, even though you probably shouldn't be right now. Uh, also currently unemployed, in other words. Oh, ouch, ouch. What a coterie. Uh, Mr. Shamespear? My lord, I am thy humble servant. Uh, I don't need a servant. Uh, pray that you're no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility had been raised that you were in fact the assailant. Lieutenant and taking your neighbor's life, man. The part you played in this whole business may be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for not, else, my lord. Yeah, okay. Miss Green? Uh, yes? You are aware of the reason you've been summoned, right? Uh... Yes, the officer did explain. The... Uh, what? Oh! He said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. And do you accept the charge, Miss Green? Because, I mean, I, I... I I don't know anything about any poisoning. And I don't know anything about this man. Mm, come, lady. Die to live. We need to get that on the record. This, this, he is... Oh, my God. What the... Verily, I know not thy prickly, pea-pigmented personage. I... Oh. Very well, let's proceed. So they're claiming not to know each other. Whether or not Miss Green has involvement in this affair. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? I barely even go to the East End anyway. It so happens I passed by the neighborhood six days ago, that's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in the hospital fighting for my life. Yeah... I've been... Unfortunately, caught up in the incident on the street outside the Gerida household. You were there for that, too. An incident that rendered you unconscious for three days. That's what I'm saying. Why did we pick her? It's so silly. Or is it? Yes, it is. Like, uh. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife, though not a fault to my own. And now I'm under suspicion. It's really not a fair world, is it? What other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Mmm, that sweat drop though, I don't know. Your energies may be better spent worrying about random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. In this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Shamespear's lodgings is the Briar Road incident six days ago. That's why. We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happened. Oh, no! That incident six days ago, you mean you want me to relive that awful accident? I know it's hard, Miss Green, but yes, unfortunately. Please tell the court what happened. And of course, we will be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamespear. Eh. Uh, oh, 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 what happened six days ago it was nothing to do with me being poisoned. Well, that, well let's let the uh, defense attorney decide that, I reckon. The witness will present their formal testimony on the subject of the incident that took place on Briar Road. The 17th of February! They're both kind of tense from the looks of it. Oh, they're like frozen in time. It was six days ago. At about 5 p.m., I was walking along in the snow when I suddenly was stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just the house where the men in the case have their lodgings. I was at the tavern of the eve of which thou speakest. For I had bespoken my supper. It was the first time I'd been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. I'd like to hear more. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital. So I knew nothing about all this business. Alright, so statement number three seems a little fishy. A second incident inside a week of what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. One can only presume this is... Most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you were not in your room, Mr. Shamespear? Twas the following morn, when I did awaken, that I learned the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of the law make on the floor above mine? Hmm, 
when Soseki-san was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Right. First game. By the way. I suspect that there's nothing connecting these two witnesses. But mere happenstance. It's true. It doesn't seem as though they're, unrela they're, they're unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here. How the dump was... Why was she summoned at that specific time? Like, it's kind of weird. And the envelope in Shane Spears' room. Dude, that's the evidence that she's been in there. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. This is one of those moments where it's like, Johnny, no, no, Johnny, Johnny, no, think about it. Think about it a little harder. Uh, uh, Ply playthroughs are hard sometimes. And this is my one and only chance to expose it. Okay, quick, quick. Uh, uh. Counsel, you may cross-examine as you wish. Yes, my lord. All right, head in the game. Head in the game. Come on. <sighs> but poor Miss Green, please don't tell me. Please let it be an accident. Oh, thank God we healed. Okay. It was six days ago, 5 p.m. I was walking on the road. This is all true. The men in the case had their lodgings, right? Oh, the statement number four. Whoops. All right, what's this matter you were attending? I'm so curious. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It was nothing, really. It's not worth mentioning. Hmm. You remember, you mentioned to us yesterday at the hospital. Uh. He's just got the same stupid smile on his face. He's... I was related to the cards you were holding. Right. That. Uh, that card. She tried to hide it. Dude, no, oh, she's been fishy this whole time. What was that? She clearly just hit something behind her back. Mm, weird. But technically not illegal. From memory, I believe the car contained a note. Red, I have information about the death of Duncan Ross. But what does that matter? There was nothing to do with Duncan. Hmm. Excuse me. Do I really want to pursue this? I don't know. He might be leading us astray. Well, you never know. Mr. Shamespear, do you have something to share with the court? Just a couple of dots. I don't want any. To be or not to be, that is the question. Ah, pray forgive me. The great bard's word springeth from me with ne'er their thought. So this is a colossal waste of time again. It be oh, it's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit now, is that it? That's why you committed the murder? Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance? Maybe you knew this Mr. Duncan, like I know you do? Ah, uh, um, well, nay, nay, sire. It was nothing at all. Presumably, you know the name, though. Duncan Ross. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. At a time. I, I, I uh, would be if we were so, but sadly, nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you're saying you deny it. Okay. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in, in the room just one floor above you. <sighs> hmm. We gotta catch him out in a lie. Miss Green? My, my lord, have I done something wrong? The call that I mentioned before containing the note. Do you have it upon your person? I do, yes. But I don't need it anymore. In fact, I should just throw it away. Really. No, you shall not throw it away. Uh, please. The court will take it. We'll dispose of it. A note in the envelope that seems to have been ripped. Oh, open rather roughly. Can the instruction meet someone who claims to have information on Duncan Road? Finally, I can read this. That's what links Mr. Shamespear, Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. He had the photograph in his... Wait, did he have a photograph in his room? Yes, he did. He did 100%. That's when we got that. So, I mean, hey, let's just take a minute. You know, let's put a pin in this and just look over evidence real quick. Sorry to eavesdrop, Miss Green, but we gotta do it. The envelope. It's been ripped carelessly, hasn't it? Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that, though. Hmm. Uh, what is it? The way the envelope is torn. So I'm sure I've seen the exact same shape somewhere. Oh, you don't mean... Were you thinking of the piece of evidence, Mr. Naruto? Exactly. That's it. Try to match them up. Okay. The game does it for us. Thank goodness. Aha! 
They go perfectly together. This torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs to this card. And they've now been fused. Super cool. I guess. No, they just update the uh, information that, yeah, my screen had one. And also, Shamespear. Well, we shouldn't say Shamespear had the other, but a piece of that exact envelope, which is very difficult to duplicate. Think about it was in his lodgings, so. And we can't actually read the message. I guess that's all that it said on it. We do need to hear a testimony of what actually happened. And okay, Scotland Yard. Holy moly, that's a lot of burglaries, buddy. Six counts of suspected murder, died of natural causes whilst in prison. His final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The estimate 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains uncovered. Manchester Stage Waves Prison announced the death of convict murder and burglar, Selden. By natural causes in the early mornings, he had been suffering with a fever since the end of October, alerted by shouts of fellow cellmate. Medical staff arrived and only found already found dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. Still, I mean, other than motive for Shamespear, it, I don't even know what this update really tells us. Maybe it'll come into play later. And the bottle of poison. It sure is one. Hmm. I can look at the bottom for some reason. Weird. So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strike nine. I think I'm saying that right. There are a few remnants of the bottom of the bottle. Here, look. You mustn't be tempted to try it, even though it does look so deliciously grape flavored. Of course not, as long as we don't lose this trial. Mr. Naruhodo! No, even if we lose this trial. No, we mustn't lose the trial in the first place, Mr. Naruhodo. Make your mind up, Sasato. Jesus, okay, that was <laughs> kind of macabre. But back to it. So we got the envelope from that. Was admitted straight to the hospital. Nothing about... So I knew nothing about all of this business. We know that's not true. We know... We pretty much have hard confirmation now. You did go to his lodgings at some point. I'm sorry, Miss Green. We have to catch you on this lie. You didn't regain consciousness until the day after the trial, did you? In the early hours. Exactly. So how come I have anything to do with it? And yet you still haul me in the courtroom like this, honestly. So at the time of poisoning, the witness was unconscious in her hospital bed. Could there be a more airtight alibi? Well, she could be faking. I don't wanna, I can't say that without any like hard evidence. And yet, in spite of that, you claim that I was the culprit. Well, I, I know, I'm, but you certainly haven't produced any evidence to support your wow claim, have you? None at all. There you have it. The good lady has yet to see evidence, my learned friend. Right, I'm working on it. So do we just say otherwise with the, the piece of evidence? We're really up against a wall here. Dang. And you're smiling? You pursued Mr. Shamespear wonderfully there. Worked out well, hasn't it? We have a clue, at least. All right, now to pull off a really insightful objection. Somewhere. Well, as you manage to expose this promising new angle, I wonder if you should perhaps try to develop that. Yes, of course. And yelling out objections isn't necessarily the best way to do that, I suppose, but... I mean... I know, like, obviously pressing everything gets you places, but at the same time... <laughs> Look at that animation. <laughs> but I don't effing want to. I was at the tower on the eve, which thou speak for, uh, uh, bespoken my supper. What is the exact time? The exact time. Do we, can you tell us? I mean, it was a while ago. A tavern, you say? Which one? Twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. Tis a jewel in the east end. Yes, I'm sure. And a little unexpected, I feel. What? Why is this unexpected? What do you mean, Lord Van Zeeks? The slug and salad offers unusually fine dining. For the locality, at least. Not an establishment you'd expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. True. How did you afford... You still paying? Alright, just check it. But, like, how'd you afford that? It's true. The menu lists premium crust of bread. And glasses of water in different levels of cloudy cloudiness. What? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense if you're 
you know, 100 years ago. I would have expected Grub's grubbery in the local vicinity to be more appropriate for your means. Is he fibbing? Because he wants to sound cooler? Watery soup and mushy peas. Or rather, soupy water and pea like mush. Or it's not getting us anywhere. And equally appetizing. Uh. I just wanted to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? Nothing yet. How different can water really be? I don't know. This guy definitely drinks Fiji. Thinks he's fancy. Perhaps there's a more plausible explanation? A specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment? <sighs> to meet with Miss Green. Agreed. The fact that on the day of all days, he dined in a place he wouldn't normally. It does stand out. So Mr. Shamespeare's own actions on the day of incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I if we'll have more evidence. Present evidence. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's go. Mr. Shamespeare. Yes, sire? On the day in question, is it not the case that you visit the Slug and Salad, a place you don't normally patronize, for a very particular reason? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Pray that thou hast some purpose. Speak as it. Okay, here goes. I will present the court with evidence. It, it's the it's this, right? Like, it's gotta be. I know the envelope seems to have been ripped up. The envelope probably has... Wait, no, friggin', we need the contents of the envelope. God, I mean, dang it. Is this, uh, found in Shamespeare's room perfectly? Uh, that doesn't tell us exactly. I know, I mean, what else could it be, though? Found in the scene of the crime. I mean, yeah, let's just do that. It's gotta be it, right? Oh, no, it might have been the other one. I believe this card reveals the answer. Okay, I got the card, though. So the other half of the envelope. Miss Green's card, you mean? That's right, my lord. It reads, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody about this letter or meeting. It's a matter of utmost importance. And we all know we're here in the, here in the courtroom. We're all going to keep it ourselves, right? <laughs> Mr. Shamespear, your actions on the afternoon to Miss Green's stabbings. Stabbing. Happened only once. Are exactly as described in this note. How do you explain that? Personally, I find it hard to believe that it's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamespear? Uh, well... Excuse me, can I say something? Uh, yes, you have the floor, Miss Green. That card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this odd man, does it? Wait, what? Miss Green, you... What is going... What is going on here? You didn't meet with him? Well, you, you'd think so, yes, but it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? Uh, yeah, yes you may. What are you... Huh? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. What now? It may amend your testimony to include details about the note. Ooh! Okay, 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 okay. Let's focus up. That note was delivered to me at my address. It's nothing to do with the old man next to me. You are well aware it was found in his lodgings, right? I think you said you received it the day before the incident, didn't you? Yes, that's right. There appears to be no indication of the sender's name or address on the envelope. It was in my letterbox. That's all I know. I'm afraid I have no idea who sent it. And you also... You didn't make it to the place in the first place, so yeah. I have information about the death of Duncan Ross. Who is this Duncan Ross fella? A friend of mine. He did the same art school as I did. He's passed away in a tragic accident a few months ago, though. I wasn't sure what to make of the note, to be honest, but in the end I decided to go. But you ne did you ever arrive? I mean, we already know the answer. So you found out what the imp you found out what the information was? Uh, of course I didn't. You're not thinking straight. I was stabbed straight in the back. Was on her way. She was stabbed. Remember? Goodness, so forgetful. Oh yes, of course. She never made it to the meeting, so that makes sense. She would never confirm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we just bring up the? 
piece of the envelope that was in his lodgings? No, we just have to say something in the contrary on statement five. Or just show the other side of the envelope. I'm sorry, Miss Green. This was found in Shame Spears' room. Objection. That's that's pretty pretty bad. Wait, is it possible he? Oh, what is going on here? The day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in the hospital. Yes, I did. It's terribly unlucky, everything that's happened to me. Well, it is terrible. But I want to call it luck. If it's all true, that is. Huh? Navrujoto, you're calling her a liar? Uh, what do you mean? Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn off end of an envelope. Oh, all right. It is, isn't it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. <gasps> but where'd you find that? Oh, in that guy's room. <gasps> in my dwelling? I said room. Room, you idiot. Quit making me read more syllables. Gah! Mr. Shamespear. Do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> your actions that afternoon follow the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road, 5 p.m. on the 17th. And that's exactly where you went. Mm, yes. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamespear. You already knew about this note, didn't you? He's looking away. Who's he looking at? Sholmes? Hey, man, he's just sleeping. Come on. And you, Miss Green. Uh, what did I do? At this torn off end of the envelope proves the note was originally in Shamespear's room. So how is it that it came to be in your possession? Oh, I don't have the first idea. It's just a fledged, I'm just a fledging artist after all. No, you do. You're lying. There's only one explanation. You broke into Shakespeare's room and stole it. Oh, no, Miss Green. Come on. You did what? Sorry. Th th thou, thou hast what? You broke into, I mean, I did, th thou were in my room. <laughs> what on earth do you want with me? Mm, who can say? Uh, I would say that both witnesses need to testify <sighs> again. <laughs> Miss Green. Oh, oh, yes? Whilst you have the court's sympathy, I'm sure for the suffering you've endured in recent times, anyone found to be giving false testimony in court will be duly punished. Please bear that in mind. Huh? Yes, I know. Very well, then. You will give formal testimony again. Could you imagine if Ace Attorney just like, you know, everyone just told the truth on the first go? Like, my God, we'd going to be half as long. A subject to a curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. Oh, she received it all right. She got that five finger discount. Okay. It's just out with it. I do remember now. It was a week ago. Her adventure, that note was delivered unto me. On the day within, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad. Yet, no one came. Thereafter, on the evening, I shared the company of the Japanese fellow. I did see the note had vanished. Okay. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can think of a couple reasons. I can point out the villain here. And as for the torn off piece of envelope, I don't know anything about it. That was surprisingly short. Okay. Uh, you're not claiming to receive this letter, do you, Mr. Shamespear? Do I believe that, though? Faith, tis so, my lord. And I would swear to have set upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I've not laid eyes upon it. Hmm, well, that being the case, young lady, I appear your testimony was... A lie? Is that what you think? 
How unfair of you to think I'm the one lying. I, I beg your pardon? I don't know what to believe anymore. Oh my god. Okay, just focus on the facts. I'm just a fledgling artist. As I said, in fledgling artists don't lie. That note was delivered to me at my address. Besides, we all know who the lie around here is. Well, you can point fingers all day, but the evidence is undeniable. If that's true, Miss Green. How do you explain the facts? How did this envelope... This part of the envelope was that without question there. I don't see why I should explain. What? Hey, you're kind of you're ruffling my feathers now, lady. I'm a fledgling artist. My job is to just say what happened, that's all. It's your job to get the explanations and the proofs and all that. You, the fledgling lawyer. I'm not fledgling. I mean, it's my third case, but chrono chronologically. I mean, it's kind of my fourth if you count the boat. Okay. The fledgling will do his best, all right? Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Uh, will we ever learn it? Well, counsel, you got us, home slice. I'm ready. I think. Farewell, then. Get on with it. Miss Green clearly did break into Shamespeare's room. There can be no question of that. And that's how she acquired the note. Yeah. Two facts are starting to lead me to a possible explanation for all of this. And it's a pretty it's not a pretty one. I know, right? Like, come on. Then why was she stabbed? Was I just I don't get it. I really don't get it. What are we dealing with here? I drew my just a week ago, but adventure the note was delivered unto me on the day we're in the artery. Blah 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 blah. blah. Shut the frigo. In the evening I shared the company of Japanese fellow. I see the note did vanish. But she would... Hold on. The timeline, though. If she's stabbed, how did she... How did she take it? Well, Shamespeare's lying. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, did you? Why would I? I can think of a very good reason, actually. A very good reason, indeed. Huh. Really, now? And also, wait, we never got that box either. What was up with that? Anyway, I'm going to press here. Just slip up. You know, you know him. You think that's why he died. It seems that this note was actually delivered to Shamespeare about one week ago. Oh, does it? Does the, does the note actually, like, there's got to be some postage on it or something. No, there's not. What the, okay. I don't know how British Postal Service works. But for some reason, it ended up in your possession? I can't think of any way that could have happened, except for you breaking into his room. Oh. But for what reason would the witness have done that? I, um, kind of have a good idea. I won't deny that Miss Green's possession of the note would appear to defy logic. However, until and unless her involvement in this case can be proven in some other way, any further pursuit of this note is meaningless. Miss Green could have only come in possession of the note by stealing it from Shamespeare's room. And yet, there's no obvious reason why she would do such a... She, she did it for her... Her, her ex-lover, who died! She was suspicious! We're close now, I can feel it. We're so close to a breakthrough. Miss Green, would you really kill to get revenge? I just gotta go in my gut here. But we can't actually... We don't have any actual evidence that points to the fact that she already knows him. But she said it on court record that, yeah, already that it was a friend. So the hidden photograph, I can't imagine why that would be there. It shows the landlord, Mr. Garadev, and the young man. I can't remember the top of my head who, no, Shamespeare could not have had the room above him ever. And the guy in the picture, Isaac, what's his upper name? I forgot. He could never have the bottom. So how did this picture get there? Unless <sighs> Miss Green left it behind. I, I'm, I'm, that's just that's just an idea. There's clearly a connection here. Uh, I guess that's not a contradiction. Dang it. Okay. My bad. I don't know what you mean. 
think I snuck into his rooms to do... To do... I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? To kill him. To kill him with poison. That we already know you were in possession of. That was actually it. Domp. At the hospital yesterday, we saw that... Dude, so much of this case is like, Oh, hi, Miss Green. I hope you don't have a ton of evidence. <gasps> what is that? And th throw the contents spilt during the course of our meeting. A small quantity remained. <gasps> According to the defense... Independent analysis. Mr. Sholm's chemistry set. <laughs> Makes it sound so juvenile. The liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as Strike 9. What? Strike 9? A very poison that afflicted Mr. Shamespear! Uh, oh! It's not actually Shamespear? It was Miss Green? You gotta be kidding me! Miss Green, you broke into this man's lodgings. For one reason. And one reason alone. To cover the end of the pipe that feeds the gas lamp in Mr. Shamespear's room with poison. <sighs> you gotta be kidding me. I can't believe it, her? Can, can this really be? You broke into my room to, to. It may seem incredible to the court, but from the remaining clues, there is only one logical conclusion that we can reach. The person who attempted to take Miss Shamespear's life with poison was you, Miss Green. I can't believe it. Oh dear, oh dear, we, oh dear me. I'm, I'm, th is this really gonna end this way? Oh, or, 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 uh, counsel, are you seriously just the woman put poison on the end of the pipe? I mean, when you really break it down, it's kind of obvious. She had poison. And she had, and she, I don't think she likes this guy too much because he killed Isaac. What's his name? Duncan. Yeah, Duncan Ross, my bad. There's no other way to explain the facts. But a Miss Green did indeed set his odious trap six days ago. And the victim had put his mouth in the pipe the very evening as expected. The attempt to murder would have happened six days ago. Wait, uh... That's a very good point. She was... Wait, when when would she be able to do it? What? Perhaps not, my lord. What? I beg your pardon? You're backing me up? There was a significant police presence in the area. Oh, right. On account of the incident at Briar Road, local residents were being interviewed. So, that makes perfect sense. Stinking, Shamespear's not going to commit another murder while the Bobbies are all out and about. It's going to lay low for a couple days. Is that what, Z what Ziggs is saying? Let me continue and I'll get to it. Local residents were being interviewed throughout the night as part of an ongoing inquiry. A circumstance. Criminal. Would likely have chosen not to carry out wrong. Yes, he's backing me up. Oh, wow, Van Zeeks. Thanks. And of course, the following morning, there was activity at Shane Spears' address. More activity? Oh, right. The, uh, Mr. Natsumi being arrested. Yeah, that makes sense. And as the defense has already proposed... Proposed... Mr. Shamespear is meddling with the gas pipe for a very sinister reason to cause the gas stove in Mr. Natsumi's room to go out, thereby asphyxiating the occupant. But, of but once Mr. Natsumi had been arrested, his room was under constant surveillance. In the circumstances, Mr. Shamespear had no reason to blow air into the gas pipe. His intended victim being in a prison cell, so he would, he would ease up. The need to tamper with the gas removed. The poison in the pipe lay dormant. And then when Natsume comes back... No! <laughs> Three days ago now, the situation changed again. Right, because we got Natsume uh, a non-guilty verdict. So we went back home. The trial which the man stood accused of stabbing Miss Green in the back. Which we now know, most likely not a government conspiracy... It's just, yeah, like we thought, really unlucky. I mean, you know. And I think Miss Miss Garadeb was a double agent or something. That results in Mr. Natsumi returning to his lodgings for the first time in two days. And that very night, the gas stove was mysteriously went out. Mr. Shamespear was mysteriously poisoned. Uh, um, 
What? Who is going to get the guilty verdict here? I don't understand. In conclusion, the poison that was present on the mouth of the gas pipe had put there in the victim some four days earlier. So the timeline finally matches up. Why are you freaking out? Oh, she's a little box. Dude, she's too cute for prison. Come on. That's adorable. But the facts remain. If she, She's killing people. Ah. With that new understanding, it becomes clear this letter was all a part of the plan. Uh, what plan? The court will recall that the note gave instructions to visit the slug and salad at 5 o'clock and that the recipient should tell nobody else. The reason for the instructions are now clear. To get Shamespear out of the house. You gotta be kidding me. She's a mastermind. To make sure I was at home. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. While you were out, Miss Green could safely slip into your room, knowing that she wouldn't be disturbed. You, you mean to say that letter was written by Miss Green? Dude. In order to cover her tracks, she took it away with her when she left. Just after she smeared poison over the mouth of the gas pipe in your room. We're done. We're actually done. Uh, what do you gotta say for yourself, witnesses? Y'all, y'all both bad. Oh, I mean, my God. Yeah, just who are you? Why'd you try to kill me? Miss Green's motive should be obvious. I mean, I, I don't know the guy's name, but I know his face. He looks, you know, looks like normal, normal guy. It's all tied up with someone whose name we've heard several times already during this trial. So that's what's behind all this, huh? Wait, several times. That was only once. You will share your apparent understand with the court, please, counsel. Which person's behind the woman's motive for the... <laughs> you never can know. <laughs> okay, it's pretty up. <laughs> yes. That's the only motive she needs. Duncan Ross? I thought his name was Isaac. Why'd I think that? That's right. Before the defendant, Mr. Natsumi took up residence in the lodgings of Mr. Garadeb's. Somebody else was renting that room. Mr. Duncan Ross. I knew I'd heard that name somewhere else. It's all over the papers a month ago. When the man died in strange circumstances at a haunted lodgings. That does ring a bell. Oh, of course. Yeah, I remember now. A uh, young man claimed was strangled by a convict's curse or something like the like. Sadly, my lord. It wasn't a curse of any kind, nor was it an accident. That man died as a result of Mr. Shamesphere blowing gas pipe and causing gas to leak into that room. It was murder, plain and simple. Oh, thank God. We're still going to get him on that, right? We're still going to get him on that? Like, like I've established this? Wait, what, Miss Green? <laughs> well, what do you know? The world is so unfair. Curses, curious deaths. That's all people care about. If it's an interesting story they want to know, it doesn't cross their minds that real people are involved. And once they're bored, just one month later, once the story's lost its appeal, everyone's forgotten him. You, you mean you? Duncan was... Miss Ross was Miss Green's fiancé. <gasps> A fiancé. You may not have known until now who Miss Green really is, Mr. Shamesphere. But she doesn't exactly, she knows exactly who you are. Because you're her sworn enemy. The murderer who took the life of the man she was to marry. M marry I, um, oh goodness, I thought, uh, I thought he was a bachelor. He was, he was single, he was only had one footstep up there. Miss Green. Is it not the case? Then order to exact revenge on Mr. Shamespear. You smear poison on the gas pipe. Just out with it, please. It's the only way we can... I can't handle this. This is too effing sad, bro. <laughs> this is all quite extraordinary. Am I correct in my understanding you now accuse both parties, counsel? A double? A daily double? Each of different murders. I mean, the facts don't lie, my lord. Uh, it's just... Well, it's the, it's, it's how it is. Come on. Inhaling so deeply, it appears that my fledgling, learned friend, has taken in a lungful of dubious gas. 
That's causing his judgment to be clouded. I mean, come on. Like, dude, look at all this evidence. Come on, man. Like, it's freaking... I know you gotta say it, but like, come on, come on. He did help me out at one time, so, I, you know, it's not all bad. Just, you know, that Japanese thing. He's gotta chill with it. Why would Mr. Shakespeare have wanted to kill his neighbor? You have a completely failed to provide a motive to substantiate your accusation against the man. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, that's right, my, uh, Mr. Reaper, my liege. I have been slighted. Tis lies, all lies. I deny every utterance. And you'll have to forgive me, Mr. Narahudo, sir. But I don't intend to admit to anything either. Miss Green. I get it, but come on. I'm sure you think I'm being very rude, but I'm not going to be sent to the gallows for the likes of this scoundrel. This lady kind of kind of rules. I will, uh, but you broke into the man's room. If you didn't do it to smear poison on the pipe, what was your reason? Hmm. Uh, I thought I'd have a look around. That's all. <laughs> I beg your pardon? You're right. I suspected him. So I thought perhaps I'd find some evidence of something in his room. Evidence that it was him who took Donkin's life. Oh, vileness. Oh, villainy. Oh, tyranny. Oh, rotundity of woman. But in any case, whenever I leave my room, I turn the key in the lock. That whole place is falling apart. Locks on the doors are no different. I'm glad that clears that up. Duncan showed me how to unlock the door with some tips of the piece of wire. Oh, awfulness, oh, awfulness, oh, tyranny, of profanity of women. I hate both of them, honestly. We will consider your trespassing some future occasion, but for now, tell the court you found what evidence your search revealed. I spotted the note I sent by him lying on the floor. When I went to pick it up, I noticed something. One of the floorboards was loose, and underneath it, I just... Is this about what's going to be in the tin? Oh! Yes, we also discovered this hiding place. Inside was a newspaper cutting, a photograph, and an empty tin box. Yes, well, the thing is, when I found it, the box wasn't so empty. Oh my god. You don't say. Yes. The key? Oh, look at your little smile. This rather nice key. <laughs> what are you doing with that? Jesus, what the crud? Every ounce of color is drained from his face. Give it here. Give it to me now. It's mine. I inherited it. You, what was that witness? What did you say? You inherited it? How? Uh, oh, I don't know. I... Uh... What's all this about he inherited the key, I guess, when he moved in? It was obviously important to you since you had gone to such lengths to hide it, so I took it. I don't know what it was for. But he took something precious from me, so I took something from you. So what if it means you can't open something now? I don't care. Give it back this minute. Give it to me now. Whoa. Calm yourself, man. God dang. What is going anywhere? So Shakespeare had tried, in one case succeeded, to take the life of two lodgers now. His motive for doing so is the key to everything that's happened. Oh. Oh, the key? What? It's true that there appears to be no... Wait a minute. Do you think this guy went to jail before and... That was Seldon's key. Ooh. It's true there appears to be no motive to support the accusation against Shakespeare. But considering everything we know, I think there's actually something we could explain. What? I I need to recall every piece of evidence at our disposal. We've not we've not took Seldon into account yet. Come on! Because I'm sure that I just caught a glimpse of the link that runs through all these events. What is this key? I must demand you present evidence to the court, support your claim. What is it you can explain the motivation of Shakespeare's alleged crimes? Your Honor, a whole lot of money. Uh, that's 
an officer police report? He wanted this thing? The Selden file. How did you get your hold of that? I got a little friend. S Selden. The now sadly deceased Mr. Ross and the defendant, Mr. Natsume, have only one thing linking them. The fact they have lodgings in the same room. Well, yeah, I, I guess. A room that was formerly occupied by Selden. Until that is, he was arrested by Scotland Yard for his involvement in multiple burglaries. I see. So happens, the convict Selden left behind one very substantial mystery when he died. One thousand pounds worth of loot, yes. Which remains to be found. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I remember. It's all coming back to me now. It's written here in the file. Huh. Thousand pounds lost en route to hell. Quite the tagline. That's how the papers sum it up anyway. It seems that one particular fellow inmate was with the convict in his final moments. It's not hard to imagine Selden entrusting that inmate. His very closely guarded secret location of the sto stolen loot. And perhaps a key to unlock whatever valuables were in. Oh my god, you're a convict? You mean this key is... Yeah. Shamespear, it was you, wasn't it? You were at the capital offender's side when he died. Were you not? But what are you talking about? Shamespear's not his real name. Tis a false charge, I tell you, false charge. You have to prove. The name of the inmate who was with Selden at his death isn't noted in the file. But a simple telegram to the prison where he died would quickly tell us how false charge this really is. And you don't want to make Van Zeeks angry, so out with it. If it's true, why would the man be so intent to kill every subsequent occupant in the convict's lodgings? There's only one explanation for that, my lord. It was in the very room that Selden hid his loot. Dude. And it's not so me just like, you know, he's just like, oh, there's a there's a safe in here and he just doesn't care? Like what the So it all comes out then. It does. Having established that, all of Shamespear's subsequent actions start to make perfect sense. He was let out of prison following Selden's death. He made immediately for Mr. Gerardev's lodging in the hopes of renting Selden's old room. However, the retired army man wasn't able to offer him the accommodations of his choice. Because Selden's old room had already been taken by Duncan Ross. Uh, 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 uh. Which is why Shamespear subsequently devised his gas-based plot to kill the man. When he was succeeded... He presumably intended to inquire about switching to the newly vacant room. However, somebody kind of beat him to it. Ugh, oh, Mr. Soseki Natsumi. My god, he acts fast when he wants to. So you decided to use the ploy with the gas again, didn't you, Shame Spear? This time to oust Mr. Natsume. All for one simple and very avaricious reason. <laughs> to get your hands on the thousand pounds of loot left by the dead convict. You, uh, <laughs> He loses. Okay, we good. Yeah, we did it. Is Ms. Green going to jail though? That's effed up. I mean, I think she was doing a public service. Looks like I'm gonna snuff it before they get, listen, I want you to have me loot anything. To stop the coppers getting their mitts on it. If it's hidden in the room where I was lodging when they got me. Yeah, just the key to it. Take it. Always stay one step ahead, mate. See ya. And hell, I guess. Shamespear. <laughs> so his actually name was Shamespear. What the f- <laughs> Alrighty. So it wasn't an act. Or was it? Can't tell. It's mine. Eh? What'd you just say? It's mine. That loot is mine. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what the dumb? Uh, shame, Spear? It's all lies. I don't accept any of it. I should die. After all, you don't have a shred of evidence. You can't prove I killed that fellow. Forsooth. Oh, I'm the victim here, remember? 
Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? You're not gonna win over anybody with this act, buddy. If I don't admit it, there's nothing you can do. You can't arrest me. For the time being, anyway. <laughs> Verily, you can't arrest the victim, can you? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so close. I just need a few more hours. I swore to myself that I'd get my hands on it! And I can almost taste it now. Do you really think I'd just give up? Yes? There's no question in my mind, this man's guilty. Gee, Naruto, you don't think! But he seems so utterly intoxicated by the idea of that loot. I'm afraid that however hard you press him, he'll never admit to what he's done, Mr. Naruto. There is a way. Pardon? There's only one way I can finish him. He's already committed the most heinous crime to get his hands on that loot, which means all we need to do is find it first. Oh! Okay. A fine plan. But not for the fact that police thoroughly searched the room following the death of Mr. Ross. It is there it all must be very well hidden indeed. Uh, without conclusive evidence, I certainly cannot rule. If only. If only there was some way we could find the convict's loot quickly. Uh, Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, wake up. Mr. Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, please wake up. Mr. Sholmes. I think we might have to... Have it in our possession already? What? No, what the what the frick? Are you sure? Excuse me? Or rather, I think we may have something that can help us. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus freaking. I was about to say. Um, excuse me, someone please wake up, Mr. Sholmes. Counsel? The defense would like to make a proposal. About how to find the late convict's hidden loot. I believe we're already in possession of something that could give us a clue. Oh really? I'm operating at normal speed. It's our last chance, so it's worth the gamble. Besides, we've used the same technique once already, and definitely paid off then. That kind of just spells it out for us. All right, let me hear it. What do you propose? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We propose we can use in order to find it. I think we just use... I mean, this is the handprints on the wall. It's not the actual skin print secret gun. You know what I mean? Other than that, what do we got? So like, F it. Just freaking, that should be, that should do it. I'm not mistaken. Those are Miss Shame Spear's handprints on the wall. That's right. Exposed as a result of the defense independent investigation. Based on a wonderful new discovery by the ever so wonderful Mr. Sholmes. Yes, we know how great he is. God. A great detective. <laughs> Look how high his eyebrow is. Um, a great detective. Is that some kind of joke? Do you really think I'm going to be daunted by a man with such a ridiculous title? I would th wait. I should think the great bard ought to recognize such a title when he hears one, Mr. Sham Spear. <laughs> he woke up. Perhaps we should compete for the honor of most ridiculous title. <laughs> what are you doing here, great detective? Your unusual haunts are the filthy back streets of the capital, are they not? Ah, uh, not today, Mr. Reaper. Ah, uh, it's been too long, though. I see your complexion has worsened since we last met. Is that a diss, or is he just actually concerned? Sholmes! He does know Lord Van Zeeks, then. Well enough to say something like that. Uh, what, is that? what does that mean, then? Sholmes, you, you, you may have a herald a great detective by the population at large, but... That doesn't give you the right to come waltzing into my courtroom, sonny. If I may, my lord, Mr. Sholmes' newly developed scientific method has helped us uncover vital clues in this case already. Uh, clues, you say? I kind of forgot already. I call them skin prints, my lord. My method identifies every location touched by the individual under scrutiny. It's the method by which we were able to ascertain this gentleman's gas pipe activities with his uh, mouth there, yes. You need only a small sample of something the individual has previously touched to make an indicator solution. Any okay, sir? I'd use the teacup you've been holding. Elementary. So now, Mr. Naruto. Uh, yeah, wait, I'm the one running the show. What? What am I to use as a sample to make the indicated solution? Uh, thank you for offering to help, though. 
When the convict was arrested, he was living in what was now Soseki-san's room. We need a sample. Present a person. We need a sample to help locate Selden's loot that was hidden in the old room. What form? Well, the we don't have anything that Selden touched, do we? This photograph. I mean, that's not Miss Green's. We don't have anything Selden touched. Am I understanding things properly? I guess a person. I guess because it's definitely not the evidence. We'll need something of Selden's in order to create the indicating solution. And something the convict owned happens to be in the possession of someone listed. <gasps> the the key! The key! Upon my word, Mr. Naruhodo, your powers of reasoning appear to be the up. Yeah, it took me a while. So a little rusty. So which particular person do you have in mind? From whom can you possess? Okay, we, we just got it. <laughs> Miss Green, please give us the key. And put this dirt bag behind bars. And possibly yourself. I don't know. Miss Green. <gasps> oh, me. I. What do you want with me? The key around your neck, if you will. <gasps> Sorry. That key belonged to Selden. There will be remnants of secretions from the man's skin on the surface of it, most likely. Ah, very true. That is the sample we need. Using it, we can create the indicating solution, and you, you, you figured it out. And find out exactly where Selden touched this room that he used to rent. And most likely where the thing is, you know. Shamespear, as one great to another, I assure you, if the late convict's hall is hidden somewhere in his former lodging, I shall uncover it no more than 30 minutes. <laughs> That's not a good thing. <laughs> so, Mr. Shamespear, the truth is well within our grasp. And as such, you will never get your hands on Selden's stolen wealth. Ever! In that case, I'm glad they let Mr. Shomes have the key. <laughs> you give the key to me! That that shall have it ever! <laughs> it's over, Shamespear. You lose. No! No! You're out of options. There's only one thing left for you to do. Admit your guilt! What? Well, well, oh, oh, shameful spear! Despair! Oh, oh, be thy name! What the? Oh man, the, the confetti cannons went off a little early, I reckon. Oh my god, oh, Miss Green's out of there too. I, I can't. I hope this character never talks again. Ah, oh, frig, god dang it. Can you just stay down? F and I'm changing the voice, the jig is up. I never intended to kill the man, I just... I just wanted to drive him out of the room, that's all. So you have time to find the convict's hall of stolen goods? Yeah, basically. After you killed the young man, you still didn't move into the room. Why was that? I asked the landlord, of course. I pleaded with him, but he just refused. Why? I was three months behind on the rent. That was for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Security so really has a lot to put up with for these tenants. And he had the gas repair work done immediately after. Putting the room out of action for a while. And then, this Japanese man swooped in just in the right time to sign the new lease. Uh. Mr. Natsume, what unfortunate timing. Yeah, then five days ago, after the incident on Briar Road, when the Japanese guy got himself arrested, I thought I'd finally have my chance. But it wasn't to be. No. The scene was sealed off and guarded by the police night and day. And, if I remember rightly, Mr. Sholmes spent the whole day in there reading books. Wait, Mr. Sholmes did? What the? I... <clears throat> I forgot that detail. Couldn't even enter the room, let alone search the place for loot. Which is why, on the day Mr. Natsumi was acquitted and returned to his room, you tried again. That same trick. 
Unbeknownst to you, however, the action would lead you to a deadly trap. You gotta give it to Miss Green, though. She figured out his killing technique. Like, that's kind of... Well, I guess it was, like, published in all the newspapers, right? So, good job. But you might go to jail forever. I don't... Uh... William Shakespeare, how does it go? To be or not to be, that is the question. From Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. Well, let me tell you, in your case, it's not to be. That is the answer. You deserve to die for what you've done. I guess she's right. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Talk about a gas leak. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Could you just get like some community service? At first, I really did think it was just a terrible accident. I never forgot our conversation the night before Duncan died. Oh wow, backstory. The gas supply in my new lodgings are a complete disaster, you know, Olive. The gas supply? Yes. The stove always seems to go out in the middle of the night for some reason. That's no joke. They say it's the convict's curse. Oh, Duncan, please don't stay there. I don't care how cheap it is. All right, then. That's what's important to you. I'll start looking for a new place. Your spare room's at my house. Why don't you leave that horrible room tonight? No, I better not. We said we'd wait until we're graduated before we told our parents, remember? Oh, no. <gasps> oh, my God. But then, the last time we ever spoke, that very night, he fell victim to the gas. My goodness. I guess, yeah. It's like, oh, this is my boyfriend. Also, we're living under the same roof because he doesn't want to get poisoned. I want to believe him. I'll be like, not under my roof. Not my daughter, good night. Get out of here. That's just me. If only I'd known he was going to happen, I would have insisted he left a horrible room that instant. But instead, all I've been left with is bitter regret. I've stopped going to school. No, Miss Green! But something kept drawing me back to the house on Briar Road. I saw a stooped eastern-looking man with a mustache coming out of the house one day when I was there. He walked up the road to Grub's Grubbery for some food. So I followed him and sat myself down next to him. He had some watery-looking soup and started to pick a quarrel with the public... Pub... Publican? What? There is a pub... Publican? I've never read that ever. I read it in my head as pelican. I don't think Soseki's one of beef with birds. This place is cursed, I tell you, curse! The ghost of that car that used to live there is trying to suffocate me! I wake up in the middle of the night, freezing to death because someone has turned off the stove. The room is full of gas. I can hardly breathe. Pipes have been checked. No problem there. It's like it's... I'm the problem. That's what they're thinking. Oh. So he spelt it out for her. But how could that be? Duncan was gone and... Now this man is also suffering the same fate. Could it really be a curse? The gears started turning in her head. Then I remember. A rumor I heard about the gas company going investigating the gas installations. A rumor? You mean? Everyone's heard the story, it seems. About how they go around checking the pipes. How anything connected to the gas could be extinguished by blowing really hard. That's when it happened. A little flickering of doubt in the back of my mind. I just wouldn't go away. Was it really an accident? Oh, goodness. Once I had the idea, it wouldn't leave me alone. I plagued me day and night. So I bought this. I wanted the black markets on the East End. Oh no, you didn't. You did I truly believed it was just some medicine in the... That's crazy. I'd never been. I just heard people talk about them. And you really can buy anything you can think of there. In some ways, being able to get my hands on this so easily made it even more determined. I had to find out one way or another. Was Duncan's death an accident? Or was it murder? I mean, if he never blows on that pipe, yeah, you'd never murder anybody. Dude. In a warped kind of way, yeah, she is... Just looking out for Mr. Natsumi. But come on. 
Niu Cho's method of establishing the truth was simple but highly effective. Smear poison on the gas pipe you suspect the man of tampering with and wait. If Mr. Shamespear is innocent, nothing could have would come from what you've done. But if he was guilty, he would pay for his crimes dearly. But he somehow miraculously survived. Unlucky. I found out the name of the man I suspected, William Shamespear. Then I wrote his name in the little note. And I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad, Bry Road, 5 p.m. Don't tell anybody about this letter. I guess she included the photograph too, maybe? No, but... Yeah, when, how did she get that? I wonder. If he'd done it, I knew that would worry him enough, so he sure to go. So I waited to see if it worked. And of course, James Biff followed the instructions on the letter. I worked out where the gas pipe was straight away. So I smeared a good amount of the poison I bought on the mouth of the pipe. And the time, all the time praying that the devil's work wouldn't be done. That was all just some wild fantasy. I believe it. I don't. <laughs> Actually, no. All the time praying that the devil's work would be done. Oh my god, whoa. And that the culprit would get its just desserts. So it just comes out. She really did want him to die. If he did it, which I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, uh, but a crime is a crime, you know? I think she's, I, I don't know. Uh, I guess the jury has to deliberate. It's not my business. I'm not her defense attorney. I would be though. And I'd probably lose, because we know she did it. Ah. Three days ago, when you were first stood in the dock before us, this whole affair seemed relatively straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, my lord. Certainly never imagined the depths of depravity I would subsequently find lurking behind the scenes. It's been a long road, my friend. Dad, uh, yeah. Not as long as some trials, though. And one I certainly didn't envisage walking with you. That's rude. I mean, every time I'm in here, you're in here. Nevertheless, together we've reached the light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. Miss Green? Yes, my lord? You will henceforth be stripped of your freedom as punishment for the attempted murder of Mr. William Shamespear. Yes, I know. <sighs> and you, Mr. Shamespear, you'll be tried with the murder of Duncan Ross in cold blood and the subsequent attempt to murder Mr. Saki Natsumi here present. <sighs> Mr. Narahodo? Yeah, what's up? Yesterday at the hospital, when you and your friends stopped me from, you know. Yes, I recall drinking the bottle that would end your life. I wasn't myself. I couldn't even remember what was going through my mind. To be or not to be, I suppose. That's a question that's so hard to answer, it seems. Yeah. Well, personally, I'm glad you're here, Miss Green. <laughs> oh, goodness. I like to believe that it's a blessing Miss Shamespear didn't die when he ingested that poison. For your sake, at the very least. True. We never would have stopped her. It's going to be rough for her in jail, but it is the best outcome. Oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. Because of you, I chose life, not death. And now you've made the truth come out at last. Dude, this is trial two and I'm already tearing up. Come on. I can't thank you enough. Oh, Miss Green. Oh, you too, Susano. <laughs> so, second out to me. Uh, yes, my lord. Sonny, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> you are exonerated from all to blame in this matter. Accordingly, I will call upon the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to present a verdict of not guilty. We are in full agreement, my lord. Well, then, get, get to it. Not guilty. My tummy hurts. I don't know why. At least that storm blew over. Thank goodness. If I lost my computer data right now, that would be real unfortunate. Huh. Oh, it didn't happen? Oh, thank God. Woo. Okay. <laughs> Court's adjourned. See you, suckers. Okay. That was... A pretty amazing trial. I...
That is such a ridiculous way to kill somebody. And yet, it makes perfect sense. And from the designer's perspective. <sighs> what a trip, man. God dang. Hey, brother. What's up, man? Oh, don't cry. Oh, yes, at last. Divine justice duly done. Divine justice? My dear fellow, if there were any divine justice in this world, you would shave that mustache. Sholmes, why you gotta be like that? No! This has nothing to do with my mustache! Let's see, here it says in the Bible, nope, you're not allowed to cut your hair, so that won't be happening. Say that a luxurious mustache is a sign of physical prowess, Mr. Sholmes. Welcome soon to Mr. Harno Esquire once again. Once again, you've saved me from doom! Very happy to help, sir. Congratulations on your second acquittal in, in these short few days. I was first acquitted with and gained affection for the English literature whilst our great homeland empire. And then, by a twist of fate, I brought to the land that bore the future of that literature. Only the city of the bricks and mortar became my prison. <laughs> I might never find my feet here. In the end, confine myself to my room and live life through friendly old books. You've had such a difficult time, haven't you? Ah, uh, but a week ago now, I dragged you out of that dark and dingy room of yours, did I not? You did. You did. And I've seen more of life in this week than all my years to date. And for the first time, I feel I've begun to see a true face of the English that's so far been hiding from me behind the wall of fog. Wait, a happy ending? No way! My dear fellow, there's nothing special about the true face of the English, as you put it. Wheresoever, what goes in the world, humans are human. There are a few genuine differences. Mm, yes, I think you're right. I finally started to see that, and I've come to understand something. I've worked out why I was so attracted to English literature in the first place. Now, whoever nationality, we humans all have the same hopes and fears. We're all just doing our best to live. Fighting for our life every day. Well said, Soseki. I've come to feel the same way. I've made a decision. I'm going to cut my short my study here and return to Japan. Oh, you don't say. Why would you ever do that? Just when we become friends here in England. Oh, what a terrible shame. But I understand. No, I know. That does tug at my heartstrings. It really does. But I've decided I'd like to take everything I've learned here in Britain and write something of my own. A uh, novel of sorts, I suppose. Oh. You'll be creating your own literature? How wonderful. Oh, well, no, I mean... I wouldn't presume to call it literature. Why not? Then that is precisely the definition, Mr. Moustache. I suppose you're right, yes. It will, in a way, be literature. But as for now, all I know is I'd like to return my hand of writing. No delusions of grandeur. Okay, well, hey, once that button in time. I, for one, would love to read your work. I have a feeling we'll find it someday soon. We all things considered, it may be for the best. After all, you have once again emerged victorious. For a battle with the Reaper. Oh yeah, the Reaper's curse, dude. Oh yeah, man, what are we gonna do about that? There's no salvation for a person in the dock when the Reaper is the prosecutor. The desire to return post haste. The perceived safety of your homeland is one I quite understand. My goodness, yes. Faced with such terrifying prospects. Nobody would consider that cowardly, I'm quite sure. You should get a ticket as soon as you can. But that's... But that's... That's why I'm leaving! I mean it! Objection? Who? Oh, him, I guess? Oh. And that was the case. We found ourselves embroiled in six months ago. Why can we never talk about this? What the dump? So Seki-san did indeed return to Japan and submit a report about both our case to the government. It was on reading the report that Professor Mikotobo was prompted to visit the scholar. And barely any time later, Susato-san was given news that she was returned to Japan as well. On the back of the telegram, saying falsely that her father had fallen ill. So strange. The only possible explanation comes to mind. It's what happened after the trial on the following day. The day that we uncovered the loot hidden by the now deceased convict. No way. We're gonna actually get to see it? 
I mean, it'd be a shame if we didn't get to... Oh, have fun looking through all of this. I forgot what his room looked like. Well done, Mr. Sholmes. How simply marvelous of you to uncover the secret hiding in just one day. Wasn't it supposed to take 30 minutes? What the... the do we just, can we not bring that up? As I believe I told you, my dear fellows, skin prints are extremely useful in such situations. Wouldn't you agree, Gregson? I can't stand this bloke! Ah! Oh, I'm resisting! Yay! Greg sees how happily munching in agreement this whole time, you know, Hurley. Happily. I think perhaps humorous, Lizzie, might be the bit closer. So, it transpires the man fashioned a hiding place in the ceiling. And what's in it? What's the loot? Uh, let us look, then. Now, if you're ready, let's examine the late burglar's hall. I'm willing to bet it's not gold bricks. What the? What is that? Uh. What? Looks to be some sort of necklace or collar. A collar? Like for a dog? And look all the gemstones on it. Let's see what's claimed to be worth a thousand pounds. Perhaps it was a belt? Oh, have you noticed on the inside there? There's some dark stains. Blood? You don't think. Oh, no. I mean, there's quite a lot of it. On second thought, perhaps I won't have it as a belt. <laughs> then, of course, there's the emblem here. A large B and a small crown. B. For Britain? Ah! What does it signify, do you think? Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Hmm... I feel as though I've seen that some emblem somewhere before. Where could it have been? That's enough of that, I think. What? Huh? Sholmes, what's got on you? All the colors drained from his face. Well, Inspector, I believe you ought to be taking this, ought you? Could be very valuable evidence, after all. It must be kept safely under lock and key, and we'll forget everything we just saw here today. Goodbye, fellow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll uh, take care then. Get your crubby and miss off it, you lie. Hand it over right now. He's kind of... What, what's going on? I've never seen a collar that large before. All those jewels certainly look to be extremely valuable. It's not what stood out the most. At least not once I noticed it. Those dark marks on the inside of the collar. Those stains. Could they have really been blood? A dog was killed? Or some other animal? I don't... Oh, who can say... That was a funny case, wasn't it? It's all buttoned up now. And you look rather pleased, Iris. Oh, I am. Because I'm starting to wonder what I could use as the basis of this month's story in the magazine. But that case will be perfect. It's ever so fascinating. Talking about the latest installment of The Adventures of Herlock Jones. Hmm, the very one. The mystery of the knife in the mist. And the mustache man and the convict's curse. Perhaps. I can make it a two-parter. Oh. I can't wait. And here comes the bad news. Um. A word, please. Iris. Yes, Hurley? I'm so sorry. But you can't write about this case. It's out of the question. Uh, what? Why not? It's a great case. Then I shall have to insist that you limit yourself to the first of the two titles. The second must never be written down. Is that clear? That's kind of a buzzkill. Jeez, poor girl. Oh, fine. Yes. This this has answered nothing. And so it was what? that the second of Sol Seki-san's cases became buried in obscurity. Hey, you scared the piss out of me, boy. Don't be doing that. Now, looking back, I feel I understand. I can see why Mr. Sholmes forbade Iris from publishing the story. It would take a little longer before I saw the link between everything that had happened and would happen. For it wasn't until two months after the arrival of Susato-san's letter that events began to unfurl again. You gotta be kidding me. What now? With an incident that took place at the very heart of the eagerly awaited great <gasps> exhibition of love. We're actually going there! No way! Yo! Oh my god, I'm so excited. That's gonna be awesome, but no, what is... What is... Oh my god, I love Great Ace Attorney! <laughs> and 
And I'm so happy I never have to use Shulm's stupid voice ever again. Uh, no, I mean, Shamespear, Shamespear, Shulm's won't die, right? Oh, God. <laughs>